Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Aquarius in the month of December 2018. What's going on, Aquarius? How you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing well. All right, man. We're here, December 2018, end of the year. Hopefully you guys are having a good time. Sorry that this reading is kind of late. It's mid-December now, but, you know, full-time job, other projects that I take care of, so... I am a semi-busy person. <laughs> uh, anyway, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy Kwanzaa if you have or will be celebrating any of those uh, holidays. And if you're not celebrating anything, just a general happy holidays. I hope things are going well for you in December and that, you know, if you're not celebrating, if you're kind of in a Grinch mood, hopefully you don't go too far down that rabbit hole, okay? Uh, any announcements? No, I don't think so. Um, generally speaking, you know, if you're here watching this intro, uh, getting this spread was a little difficult. It felt a little, I felt a little, uh, scattered or scatterbrained. Like I was meditating and then I got to a point in my meditation where I was ready to lay the spread. And then in the middle of shuffling, like my, my mind would bounce off to other things. And it was like, in a weird way, hard to concentrate or hard to connect to what I was intending to do. So that might be indicative for some of you that might connect with some of you. Uh, you might have a hard time uh, in, in this month connecting with your purpose and feeling, uh, being able to sort of follow through with your intentions maybe. Uh, so that's just a general thing that I was feeling while shuffling, but it might not apply to you. And if it doesn't, forget what I just said. <laughs> All right, uh, Aquarius, what we're going to do now is we're going to shuffle for your outcome and your overall energy. Once those cards are out and everything is uh, lying face up, that's when the reading will begin. I'm going to put a timestamp in the description box for that if you want to jump ahead. You're also going to find the information down there on how to get a personal reading with me if you feel so inclined, okay? Let's go for it. Outcome, Aquarius, December 28th. Whoa. Now that was the fastest one. And there it is. That was really fast. Interesting. And the bottom of the deck is the overall energy. <clears throat> like I said, we flipped all the cards and let's see what's going on in your life. What is this? What is this? Wow. <sighs> wow. Three majors all reversed. And I'm, I normally try not to comment on the cards before, you know, I've interacted with them, but as an overall visual, that's, that's heavy. So we're going to find out what's going on, huh? <laughs> Please show me Aquarius in December 2018. Please show me Aquarius in December 2018. Please show me who is Aquarius December 2018. Right here. Okay, thank you. All right, Aquarius, coming into December, you come in as the Four of Swords. This is kind of nice. I mean, and considering just the general overview that I had of what's going on in your spread, this kind of makes sense to me. Uh, Four of Swords is about rest, respite. It's about reflection. It's about, in some cases, being um, sort of caught between a rock and a hard place or you're finding it hard to find a starting point you're finding hard you're finding it hard to you know connect with some get up and go energy so some of you lack energy some of you lack I, like I said in the beginning you lack uh, having a clear mind about you a clear head about you and so the bigger energy here the bigger message here is don't rush yourself Perhaps others are rushing you or you feel you should be up to speed or you should you feel you should be ahead of the game in some cases uh, regarding something. And I think that this card is, for some of you, it's showing what you choose to do because you are making the conscious choice to be in this energy. For others of you, I think it would be encouraging you to release some of that pressure, release some of those expectations and kind of allow yourself a moment of pause, allow yourself a moment of reflection, allow yourself a moment where you can, like I said, clear your head, get your, get, get your priorities correct or, or get a game plan together, get a, get a strategy together, whatever. Um, 
you know, basically, if you look in the card, I mean, the, the, the figure there is, looks like she's at a spa, right, with the clay mask and the cucumbers and all that kind of stuff. Or, I mean, and you don't even have to do this at a spa. You don't even have to go out and do this. You can have a little me time in your own home. Go go pick up your favorite mask from, from the beauty department at, at, at Target or whatever. You know, go ahead and <laughs> reach into the salad bin in, in the fridge and get those cucumber slices. And just go upstairs, run a bath light some candles, maybe get some incense, put on a meditation, put on some mindful conscious or, or um, meditation music if you don't want to hear an actual meditation with speech, whatever you need to do and just like get yourself relaxed. Some of you, this is a need to be grounded. The swords cards or the sword suit rather isn't one that to me would normally speak of getting grounded, but some people don't relax that way. Like I have a friend who I, I certainly don't understand it, but the way that uh, they go about clearing their head is to go for a run. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> for me personally, it doesn't work that way. So for you, you might be one of those people where, you know, quiet moments don't help you process whatever you need to process. You might, you might need to be physically active. You might need to go for a hike. You might need to, you know, go out on the lake and go fishing. Do whatever you need to do, Aquarius. But, um... The other part of it, if it's not, you know, whatever form of relaxation you find is, look at those knives and how they're in the, uh, the, the, the block there. So it's this idea of putting down your weaponry, putting down your abrasiveness or your whatever weapon or however you're wielding those knives. In this case, they're not swords, but uh, either way you think of it, however you would normally be wielding that. And again, swords are related to your mental capacities. It is a part of the air element, and that is you, your air sign. So that's all about your mental state, what you think, how you process information, how you rationalize information, how you argue, communication also with swords. So some of you might be in a position in work or a position in your family or, or friend circle or whatever where you're the key communicator. You're somehow bridging the gap between two different parties. So if you're at work... Maybe you're an account executive or, or you are some type of VP and you've got to talk to these people over here. You've got to talk to these vendors or these suppliers over here. You've got your boss, your, your, your upper, not upper management, but the person that you report to. So there's a lot of people that you might need to talk to. And it's basically telling me, like, I'm feeling like, mm, pump the brakes. Like, don't ice anybody out because that would be counterintuitive. That would be counterproductive. But certainly give yourself time, give yourself a moment, like take a breath, Aquarius, take a breath is how I'm feeling that. And that's, I can't remember what your November reading was. And yeah, I can't remember. So I don't, I don't know if this is like residual from November or, or some previous time in your, in your, in your uh, life so far. But what I'm feeling is you tend, you're, this is coming from a place of nurturing for yourself to calm down the communication, pull back the reins a little bit, go have a spa day, go have a long, luxurious bath, do whatever. Me time, like focus on yourself and focus on your own healing and rest and respite and, and, and you know, having time enough to really think about things. Maybe that's what was going on for you recently, Aquarius. Maybe you've been so go, 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 which is, I don't think that's normally what an Aquarius would like to do. You can do it, but being a fixed sign, that kind of goes up against your more air qualities because air is a dynamic, it's a fast moving energy and fixed signs are not fast. Fixed signs are very slow. Or, mm, I shouldn't say slow. Fixed, uh, fixed signs are steady. And so sometimes that can be kind of a conflict. You have a rhythm, thank you. Fixed signs tend to have a rhythm. I want to do this, and then this, and then this. And it's just like measured. And sometimes error is not measured. Sometimes error is just very quick. So I think because of your natural disposition, if you were called on to be in communication with a lot of people at once, have a lot of projects going on at once, whatever it is, it's just like it's moving at a pace that might have been too fast for you. So... Pull back the reins is, is, is how I'm feeling on that one. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Because I was like, what? Yeah, okay. So on either side, and I think that's kind of what I'm getting, this whole push and pull, you know, being encouraged to be quick and fast and really decisive and then this energy or this this inclination in you this this knowing in you that I I know I should be doing more or I know that you, someone else is expecting me to do more but I just can't right now and I think this whole expectation of doing more is here with the knight of wands and it's on either side of your starting position what we're going to talk about right so first off we've got that knight of uh, knight of wands and the Knight of Wands in this deck is like a little teenage kid, right? So what's that kid from like fables or like old timey story? Johnny Appleseed? Isn't that the one that wears like a pot on his head? This is like taking me back to like third grade. God, that was so long ago. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I feel like there's like this newly, not newly formed, but this very novice Thank you. Very novice, like warrior energy somewhere in your vicinity. If it's not in you, like I said, I think it might be other people. And this could be another person being that it is a court card. Um, but whatever, if this energy is with you or with someone else, this is an energy of new warrior. I am so ecstatic or I have so much energy, so much vibrancy in me so much passion to just go forward that I might be missing some of the details. I might be missing my mark. I might be overstepping. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The Knight of Wands, or any of the Knights, really, they are travelers, they are journeyers, so this could be someone, if it's not you, if this energy is not you, this could be another person, and they might be at a distance. So it might be, you know, if it is a, a colleague of yours from work, maybe this is someone who works at a different office or, or at a different uh, location. Um, and you know, I, I'm, I would not normally say this, but I feel to a certain extent, Aquarius, this person is a, a, a tad stubborn, uh, or it could be read as being stubborn, uh, because they're very much interested in their vision, which is normally, I guess you could say a good thing or a, or a favorable thing. Uh, but the Knight of Wands, he gets his target, he, 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 he knows his destination, and he wants to get there. So like I said, in a work situation, this could be a boss of yours, this could be, you know, a coworker of yours, uh, who you have to work closely with, or you have to engage with in some type of way, and they might be like, okay guys, our goal for this quarter is this, and like every day, they're telling you what the goal is and they're reminding you and they're trying to encourage you or they're trying to, you know, get you to get on the phone and, you know, land those sales or land the account or make sure you follow up with so-and-so. So this person, if they are above you, might be a little bit of a micromanager and might, <coughs> excuse me, um, and they might be kind of like almost unbearable, like obnoxious is how I get this, like stubborn, obnoxious, like in your face, you know, like this kid, he's got a freaking pot on his head and a plunger and he's going out there to joust, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> assuming the other person he's jousting has similar equipment, fine. But in a real joust, this is just like, mm, we, we should, we should slow down. We should get a plan together before we go out there, you know, to battle with this. So there's like this assured nature to this person like they're very confident again this could be energy within you and like I said I do feel like this sort of push and pull energy with 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 most of you um but what whoever this is wherever this energy is coming from it's not I don't want to say cocky it's not cocky it's just because it is mm, this knight is capable of achieving their goal is capable of reaching their destination it's just their confidence and their assuredness might be a little big like <laughs> I don't know it's like that weird case of sometimes you think if someone is like so assured of themselves they read as cocky they read as egotistical and you're like oh yeah sure okay sure mm -hmm, yeah and you kind of expect them to fail and then in in the in some of those cases they do fail. This is one of those cases where someone it could be you Aquarius, but it, but again if this energy is within you, it could be someone is 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 presenting 
uh, your Knight of Wands energy with this with this uh, position. And I'm getting on the, not the backside, but somewhere external to this person's position. Again, it could be you. There's doubt. There are people who are skeptical. And it's, again, it's not about ego, but it's a very high chance that the Knight of Wands will get what he wants. It doesn't seem like it's going to work. You know, people are listening to the Knight of Wands, you know, giving his cheesy uh, pep talks in the morning at the morning meetings or on the conference call. They're looking at the blast emails with the little funny gifs and, and, and the, you know, <laughs> semi-inspirational memes or whatever this person is doing. And they're like, oh God, here's this guy again. Like, okay, fine, we get it. You know, it's like this person might be a little overkill with their goal setting and, and wanting to achieve that goal. But I really feel they have a high chance of achieving that goal, whether it's working in partnership with other people or not. There's just a certain air I feel of success behind this person. But the downside is that it's overwhelming. Like the intention of this person, the intenseness or, or the, the uh, level of participation he gives to it or she gives to it doesn't have to be a male. Um, but the level of intensity and, and I suppose, in a, in a sense, devotion to their goal is almost too much to bear. It's like, gosh, this guy is like, you know, and I mean, a lot of self-starters are like that. If this is you or someone else, a lot of self-starters are like that. Like, they, doubt is a word that's not in their vocabulary. They don't understand the meaning of no. They don't see possible, <laughs> they don't see, uh, <laughs> uh, or they're one of these people, don't bring me problems, bring me solutions. Like, they don't, they they cast out they they throw they throw away or they're not open to quote unquote negativity so they might be one of those people at your job or even in your family but wherever they you might know this person from they are just someone i don't know the meaning of the word no and every time we talk i want you to say three positive things before we're done in this meeting like they insist on negative things and things that sort of are aligned to rejection or unavailability or however you want to think of that being discarded. Possibly a very big time manifester. This could be, like I said, a very self-starting person or a self-starter. This could be a self-made person. And again, this could just be someone who has that type of disposition. Nothing in the world is going to bring me down. Your, your mindset will reflect your outcome. So if I have a positive mindset and if I have positive affirmations and if I have positive um, goals set for myself, I will eventually succeed. That's kind of their attitude. So that's on one side of your restful position. On the other side, you got this Eight of Cups card in reverse. I'll show you upright in case you're not familiar with this deck. It's the Housewives Tarot deck. And the Eight of Cups, <coughs> in this deck, a lot of times, but I'm not sure it's going to be this time, but I'm just going to uh, say this caveat here because maybe you have, perchance, seen me talk about this card before. A lot of times in this deck, the Eight of Cups reminds me of the Eight of Pentacles. In this case, I'm not feeling that. I feel this interpretation I'm going to give you right now is a little bit more aligned to the traditional Rider weight interpretation, which is when you have the Eight of Cups, it's talking about emotional dissatisfaction. It's talking about emotional, uh, for some of you, uh, ost being ostracized or, or feeling disenfranchised, feeling apart from something, feeling that whatever is going on emotionally is just so dissatisfactory. I have to do something else. I have to get up and walk away from it. And that energy is here, even though it is a re in reverse. I do feel that's there, but I think you're actually ignoring that. Okay, you're ignoring that. So you might be in a situation again, I'm feeling a lot of this is work related. And if it's not work related, it would be related to things that feel like work. 
So sometimes our home lives, sometimes our family lives feel like work. You know, you, you're on a schedule, the kids are on a schedule, your spouse is on a schedule, your extended family, they're coming in for the holidays. So you got to put them on a schedule. It's like, okay, my parents are going to be here for an entire week. How can I keep them busy while I tend to my own schedule and the schedule of my own family? You know what I mean? So there's a lot of consideration going on around this time, just the season for having to do this crap, right? <laughs> and no offense to call it crap, but like that kind of feels like how it is. Like it's really semantics or, or not semantics. It's really, um, it's like maintenance. Like you have to maintain a certain rhythm. Like I said earlier, this whole thing about being a fixed sign, there's a predicted rhythm that fixed signs love and really uh, uh, excel at. And I feel that that's you, Aquarius. Like there's a rhythm that you want to keep, but with the insertion of your parents over the holidays or having to travel during the holidays, or there's a big project going on at work, but you want to accomplish it before the holidays, before Christmas break or, or New Year's break or whatever your whatever's coming up for you. There's just like this tiny little curveball, not even tiny. There's a considerable curveball and you're just like, oh God. I have to deal with this. So there's this emotional dissatisfaction. There's this emotional mm, oh, sort of rocky element going on. And like I said, there's this desire to want to walk away from it, to leave it alone, not deal with it, not have to deal with it, or not throw as much energy and attention into it. Just kind of let it be what it's going to be. But there's a re for some of you, there's a complete rejection of that. No, I can't just, you know, have my parents come to town and let them do what they want. Like, I have to tell them, okay, well, here are some good restaurants you and dad can go to while I'm at work, blah, blah, blah. Like, you feel you have to, in some cases, hold someone's hand or, like I said, plan and plot what they should do so that you can go on doing what you need to do. And... For some of you, like, that's kind of not going against your instinct, but you do feel like, okay, I've been doing this every year for the past eight years. My parents come to town or certain things at work have, happen to fall in the month of December and I end up working overtime or my parents come to town and I plan some things for them to do. I give them some ideas, but then they just end up sitting in my living room all day, you know, watching reruns of Murder, She Wrote or something like that. And it's like, so... Should I even put forth the effort to suggest restaurants for them, suggest things that they can do in the city or things that they can do like the little farmer's markets and Christmas markets they can go to? Or should I just forget all that, save myself the trouble and just be about my business? I think that some of you will go for that. Some of you will be like, well, you know what? For eight years, I've been doing it this way. Let me go ahead and let my mom and dad come in to town. They can do what they want. They're, they're going to do what they want anyway. It doesn't matter what I suggest to them. It doesn't matter what I provide for them. They're just going to go about doing their own thing. So let it be, you know? Yeah, there's like... My energy would be better spent elsewhere. And let's go back to what I said before. Me time. Rest, respite, reflection. Getting your mojo back. Getting grounded for some of you. So this energy where you, you would be giving it to someone else or some other um, situation or circumstance or, 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 you know, variables that need your attention or... Maybe they don't need your attention is kind of the revelation that you might come to this time. You might find or you might rationalize that, hey, like clockwork, my plans, I, I think ahead. I try to try to assess the situation. I try to predict uh, what is needed. I provide help or, or whatever. And then you find out, oh. My, my intentions or my or everything that I was trying to account for wasn't even necessary. So I kind of wasted my time. There might be that realization this year for you, Aquarius. You wasted your time previous to this. Or if you do it now, if you do it again this year, if you do it for whatever reason, it might end up being a waste of your time. Your efforts might not be appreciated. Your efforts 
might go without being utilized by other people. You see what I mean? So, so on either side, I think you have this emotional internal demand, this internal emotional demand rather, <laughs> or this tendency to give more of yourself that you may or may not give into. Some of you will continue the pattern. Some of, of you will continue to give that effort. And others you others of you, you're going to be like, you know what? This time around, I'm just going to restrain myself. I'm, I'm just going to let it be what it's going to be. And on the other side of you, again, this energy of the Knight of Wands could be external. But for some of you, it is internal. There is this focus of let's stay on task. Let's stay on top of this project. Let's stay on top of this account. Let's stay on top of the, the itinerary. If this is not a work thing, this would just be something within your home, within uh, your interpersonal relationships. And there's just this dedication to a certain vision. So that's where I think I said in the beginning, scatterbrain. Yes. I feel like you have different aspects of your life that are calling for your attention, calling for your involvement. And it's just like they're kind, they kind of don't mix or they don't overlap that much. They're very separate. So again, you've got family for the holidays. You've got your work life. You have your own internal <laughs> needs that need to be addressed. And that's a lot of different demands. That's different aspects of yourself or different aspects of your life. And it's just a lot to do with. So that to me explains how I felt in the meditation and in the, in the shuffling. So I feel confirmed in that. I don't know how you feel, but I feel confirmed in that. Now, it's interesting. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. So I think you're having a very paralleled or very interesting because then that would be the three different elements. Okay. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. So what I'm getting is you have three, two to three, maybe even more for some of you. Two to three very distinct areas of your life in this in this scenario, you could look at them as lanes or columns in your life that are calling for your attention, calling for your energy, calling for your time, okay? Now, above this emotional thing where outside of yourself, you have to take care of something, take care of a certain relationship or take care of people in a relationship, right? family, friends, your, your, your spouse, your children, I don't know, but there's an emotional attachment to a certain relationship, right? You have the world in reverse right above it. So for somewhere I was talking about the parents coming to town, a uh, world card can talk about travel. And so being in reverse, there might be a little bit of a delay in the travel or there might be a change in the typical travel. Uh, so maybe instead of your parents coming to you this year, you're making efforts to go to their house or something like that. So it's just a little different than what you might expect or what you've experienced before. Um, but regardless of the actual physical travel for, for, for some of you, the world is about mm, changing. It's about things moving from one phase or stage to the next. But in this reversal, there is a stall or a, an in, incomplete closure or this inability to turn over to, to the new page, to the new stage, to the new phase, right? There is this adherence to what is already established. Oh, and let me show you this card upright just so you can become familiar with it while I talk. Um, It's like, you know, or other people in the situation also know that we can't continue on with this the, the way it's been. Some things have got to change. Not all things, maybe, but considerable things have to change. Again, you have it in reverse. So some things have to be let go of, some things have to be welcome in, some things just have to be altered, but some type of editing process needs to happen. And again, I feel it's an emotion from an emotional standpoint for you Aquarius, it's a, it's it's demanding. It's a lot on your plate. And so maybe you need to alter some things, maybe your parents, your spouse, your children, maybe they need to alter or edit some things from their uh, from from their side of things, or what they're bringing to the table. But there's this 
it's not a disconnect, but there is a certain lack of acknowledgement. Thank you. There's a lack of acknowledgement of how stressful it is for you, how stressful it is for your husband or your wife, how stressful it is for you in combination with these other areas of your life. And there's just, <laughs> there's, <laughs> I'm sorry, I laughed because there was a gif that came to my mind. <laughs> We're basically just too much, just too much. Okay, so this is too much I'm feeling. And again, the world is not necessarily an easy energy. All of the arcanas come with a certain weight to them. And so for you, Aquarius, the world card is feeling like, ah, oh, it's a weight, but we're just going to have to grin and bear it. And I'm like, mm. but if you change some things and get this energy in the upright, you're going to see this passage through to the other side or to this new level of normal or this new way of just being, you know, standard, you know, maybe for, you know, I keep going back to the parents thing and visiting for the holidays. And for some of you, maybe your parents are older now. And maybe if you suggest to them, hey, mom and dad, why don't you guys just stay where you are? We'll come to see you. Maybe that would be a, a, a change or, or sort of a lessening of the burden, a lessening of this emotional dissatisfaction for everybody, not just you. Because if your parents are older and, you know, they're, they're getting to be a certain age, it might not be easy for them to travel. Maybe one of your parents has extreme anxiety. And so getting on a flight is just a whole thing. And, you know, they have to go see their doctor to get certain, certain medications so that they can fly easier, something like that. Or financially, it could be an issue. Financially, it could be a strain. And as much as you would want to be with your family and have your parents with you or you with your parents, however it goes, it just might not be super feasible if it brings on this stress of money. Now, this that's very specific for someone. Th this stress of money, having to travel, get the gifts. You know, if you can't stay, that means you have to stay at a hotel or you or, or a bed and breakfast or Airbnb, whatever the hell you're doing. And it's just like, who has this money? Like, who has the money for this? So, something. It doesn't have to. We all have free will, of course. But I feel that there would be a benefit if we just changed some of the details, changed some of the expectations, or just changed some of the ways that we go about doing things. You know, if your parents usually come for two weeks, why not one week? Less money spent, less stress on you and your family and, and the schedule that you guys have to maintain. And your parents can get back to their lives together. You know, I, I, my, my parents are not up there. But I know how parents are <laughs> a little. It can be a little like, come on, like I'm, 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 an, I'm not, I'm your child, but I'm not a child. So the lecture can stop now, you know? So if that's the dynamic between you and your parents, or if that's the dynamic between you and it doesn't even have to be parents. It could be your grandparents or your aunts or your uncles, whoever. If that's the dynamic in a certain relationship, why endure that for two weeks when you can endure it for one? Why do you, you know, there's no set rule that these people have to stay here for two weeks. Chop that in half, one week. Reduces the burden, you know? Little little changes, and maybe they're not little to you, they might be significant, but certain changes, just the dynamic is totally different from that one thing. Less time in our house, or maybe that's it. Half the time in my house, half the time in my brother's house or my sister's house, you know? Why, why does mom and, why do mom and dad have to stay here the entire two weeks? I mean, they're your parents too. Step up, you know, something like that. Uh, now, next, 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 mm -hmm. over here, dealing with Mr. Knight of Wands or Mrs. Knight of Wands or whoever, or whatever the Knight of Wands is, got the lovers in reverse. Card of Gemini, so there might be a Gemini involved, but that is neither here nor there really. And I'll show you that card upright so you can get used to it. And then boom, <laughs> in reverse. Oh, that's nice. Let me show you this again in upright because they're like, look at that. Okay, so look at this. And I've had, this card has come up a few times for the month of December for other signs. Um, and I've interpreted it different every time. So this time I'm going back to something I said earlier and I don't know who I said it for earlier. I don't know whose reading it was in, but look at this, like these two people look happy as a pair of clams or happy as two peas in a pod, right? But that car is about to plunge into the ocean. They're about to 
encounter incredible trauma. They might die. You know, if you if you literally saw this and it wasn't a movie set, you'd be like, oh my God, those people are going to die. <laughs> you know? Uh, and even in a movie set, people can die. And I don't know why I have to clarify that, but yeah, anyway, doesn't matter. But you got it in reverse. So remember earlier when I said that the Knight of Wands, he seems to be driving towards something, pressing towards something, maybe quite fast, or it seems like he's unprepared, or it seems like it is doomed for failure, or it's not going to be successful. This being in the reverse, again, because they're like, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. I'm like, okay, look at it. Okay, so what I just said, it looks like it's going to be a disaster. And if it wasn't like on a movie set, you'd be like, oh my God, those people are in danger. But maybe you are looking at a movie set. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Someone's going to have some tea after this. <laughs> anyway, um, so look at it. Like, this is like a stunt, you know? This is, this is like a stunt going on. It's like Jason State. What's his name? Jason Statham? Whatever. <laughs> Whatever his name is. These are like two action movie people, you know? You call action, run the, run the car off the rig and all that kind of stuff. It looks disastrous, but actually... <clears throat> it's pretty clever what they're doing. So that's a totally not traditional way of interpreting this card because the lovers is about choices. The lovers is about going left or right, up or down, whatever. And it's about making, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Ooh. Mm. Excuse me. I'm sorry about that. It's about making a certain choice. And sometimes you'll hear readers say a head or a heart decision. And that might be the case. You know, someone, whoever the Knight of Wands is, it could be you, um, but it could be someone else as well. They might be dealing with having this head or heart decisions. Like I said, you might have a micromanager, someone over here who's just like constantly cramming, <coughs> you know, company mottos and, and, and uh, goals. <clears throat> just a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm an Aquarius. I apologize about that. Oh, gonna get that. Gonna get that cup of tea for sure. Now, again, head or heart decision. Having you know, almost not two opposites, but certainly two vastly different decision or or uh, possibly taking one over the other and running with it, being like determined or 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 like I said earlier, assured that this is the right choice. And the Lovers is not an easy card. And that's her, as, at least not as easy as I made it to be like, oh, you know, you just side with one and you go with it. No, because the Lovers has this residual energy of, I made this choice, but is it the right choice? And there's like a, not a panic, but there is sort of that presence of, was it truly the right choice? Like, the struggle is to find the truly correct choice and be confident in that choice. Traditional Rider Weight deck, it'll show an angel above the two people. I think it would be in the Garden of Eden, right? It looks like Adam and Eve, or at least a situation very similar to that. Uh, and there, in that card, not in this one, there is an angel over it. So there is this whole thing of having faith that even after you've made the choice and you still feel like, oh, is it the right choice? Or, oh, I, I, I was confident, but now I'm not. It's like, well, you know, you're divinely guided and all that good stuff. In this card, you could see that. You could see <clears throat> this feeling or, or this idea of things being guided. I mean, a car is a guide in a way. It's kind of this vehicle. I mean, you're in control and maybe... Well, whatever. I'm not going to sit here and debate that. Or why would I debate it? I'm not, there's no one here. <laughs> anyway, um, but in this particular interpretation for you, Aquarius, I feel like if this energy is yours, and I've talked a lot about it being someone else, so if if it's not you, just apply it to someone else. But I'm going to try and, and engage this as to being your decision. <clears throat> if there is some type of decision that you're making, it seems wild it seems incorrect it seems unlikely to succeed or unlikely to have the the result that you want but looks can be deceiving is the lovely uh turn of phrase they're giving me looks can be deceiving 
So I feel like if this is you, you might, like I said, sec second guess yourself. You might feel as though uh, you made one decision and then you have buyer's remorse all of a sudden, or you feel like, oh, maybe I should go back and consider the other option again. But it's like, no, follow your instincts. Follow your gut. <clears throat> That's where that Knight of Wands energy comes in. He follows his gut. And again, that could be your energy or it could be someone else. You'll, you'll, if this is a general reading, you'll have to cut and paste and apply it where it needs to in your life. Um, but this person is definitely like, okay, I made my decision. I've set up a plan. I'm going for it. And they really have very little regrets, very little second thoughts. The Knight of Wands. And I think that is what is being reflected in this lover's energy. Because again, in the upright, I feel the anxiety or the buyer's remorse is kind of there in this whole, maybe it could be a disaster. Maybe this could not work out for us. But in this reverse, I'm feeling like, mm, nope, nope. It feels like we're driving a car off of a cliff into the ocean. But in reality, we're on a movie set and this is totally what the movie needs. This is going to be a great scene. We're going to get a special effects Oscar, whatever, <laughs> you know, it's like looking at something that other people would look at as a disaster. Other people would look at as being too risky, too risque for some of you, <laughs> um, or just like totally unbelievable, totally un un unfeasible and making gold with it. I don't know why I said that making gold, but that's kind of how it feels like. This is going to get us to the top of the leaderboard. This is going to get us to the top of the of the best companies in the region. We're going to be awarded for what we're doing. We're going to be given accolades. We're going to reach a certain level of success, happiness, contentment, if it's not business oriented. But it's just like, no, we're going to make it. We're going to make it after all. Da, 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 da. Right? <laughs> so that's kind of what's going on with the lovers. Now, the big boy, I feel, for you, is really here in the justice card because it comes over your starting position. And if I'm honest, your starting position and the justice card and the fact that they're in the middle is like really the anchor of your entire reading, okay? Like this is the tent pole here. This is the, you know, <laughs> this is it. Pole position for some of you. I don't know where I'm coming up with all these analogies or things. But again, scatterbrained energy. I'm feeling it. It's like everything, every which way is sort of how I'm taking this. Now, <clears throat> like I said, your big energy across your top line, at least, is this justice card in reverse. <clears throat> Show you upright so you can become used to it in this deck. So in reverse, <clears throat> obviously, we see this mother figure disciplining her son. <sighs> and that might, you know, be upsetting for some people. I know that that type of corporal punishment is like a big no-no for certain people. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know why I have to address this, but I do. Don't... It's a memory. I don't know why I have to say that. It's a memory. So let it go or let it be or mm, leave it where it is is kind of what they're telling me i don't know why i have to address this but i do so for some of you or, or one of you one or two of you that is semi-important okay now the the bigger thing that uh they want me to carry through with this card is this feeling of let's look again at in the upright because the kid dropped a lollipop so the kid's been a kid, you know, enjoying what life is like a child, right? And is looking a little distressed. Like, he's not happy to be getting that wooden spoon to his butt. But the, the motherly figure is kind of happy, or not happy, but, you know, unfazed by what's going on. So there's two different dynamics here. <clears throat> Justice card, also the card of Libra, so there might be a Libra. That would mean that you have a lot of air influence from your brother and sister signs, the 
the Gemini card and the Libra card, and you being Aquarius, you're the third air sign. So mm, maybe there's some brother and sisterly thing going on in your family dynamic or brother and sisterly stuff within the workplace. Maybe there's nepotism in the workplace or maybe your, your company is a family company. I don't know. But there's a divergence here between the two characters in this card, which again is different from the Rider Waite because there's only one figure on that card. In this, there are two. And one person is distressed, the other is quite happy. Or, like I said, contented, unfazed. And this is in reverse. So, for you, being that it comes above your starting position here with the Four of Swords, uh, Aquarius, hmm, you might be having a lot to think about in terms of this dynamic between two people. For some of you, not everybody. For some of you. It could be a dynamic between you and someone else. It could be a dynamic between two people who are who are uh, external to you. And again, for someone out there, hmm, it could be a family history thing, okay? And you're having to wrap your head around this. And you're you might be struggling, if I'm honest. You might be struggling to wrap your head around these two divergent energies or having to work with come to an understanding between because justice can talk about having to come to terms with having to reach uh, negotiating terms or agreements with legal terms contracts whatever um but having to merge or having to have two different sides of an issue come together and work copacetically that could be a struggle for some of you in this month or it could be, you know, focal on your mind. It could be, since it comes above your four of swords position, could be what you're focused on and what you're meditating on, what you're needing to clear your head about and, and sort of make heads or tails of. <sighs> Pardon me. And in the reversal, yeah, in the reversal, it's where the struggle comes from. You, you're having an issue. Or you're having a time of it making these things work. Making these two people get along. Or even come to the table to negotiate. Come to the table. Come to some sort of understanding. Again, it could be you and just one other person. Or it could be you actually trying to be the go-between between two different people. And your concern, of course, being that it is the justice card, that something is done fairly. That something is just and balanced and equal. Equanimity between two different parties. Get along, gang, you know, is the goal here. Um, but again, because it's in reverse, unlike the other two, well, the world card a little bit, but this, this justice coming in the reverse, such a struggle. Not easy to accomplish this goal. Perhaps connected somehow to this Knight of Wands. Having... Yeah, that could be you. You know, you could be the kid who's at, who's in distress in the card. And Smiles McGee over here could be the Knight of Wands. Because that Knight of Wands is quite undeterred. The Knight of Wands is like, we're going to win. It's fine. Everything's cool. You know, or I don't, I don't believe in, you know, not succeeding. Success is my middle name. That kind of, that kind of energy. And you're stressed out. You find that nonchalant attitude to be kind of bothersome. And again, if this is like a micromanaging boss or someone that you report to and they have these high expectations and they're in your face every day, they're sending emails every two hours, whatever, you might feel like that. Like you're getting spanked. Like this person is just like, for lack of a better word, abusing you. Like they're asking so much of you. They're like, and they treat you like a child maybe. There's just like this very hard to come to terms it's very hard to get these two energies your energy and someone else's or two people to just work it out work it out i don't know that you will find a solution if i'm honest <clears throat> and maybe you're not meant to within the month of december maybe this is something that will resolve itself later down the road if this is about your parents, if that literally is a depiction of your childhood or the childhood that your brother or sister experienced and you were kind of the onlooker or you were the older sibling out of the house type of situation, you might struggle to see your parents and your younger sibling get along. You know, that happens in family sometimes due to all kinds of circumstances where 
you're all related, you know, you're all brothers and sisters, but you have vastly different experiences in the from from the childhood home. Some people leave with a smile on their face. Other people leave crying and dismayed. Other people leave silent and sullen, and they will never speak on the events that happened of their childhood ever again. Three different experiences coming from the same circumstances, essentially, right? So that might be what's going on for some of you. You're having to reconcile something from the past and you just can't. You can't get over something, your brother or your sister, whoever can't get over something, your parents don't remember or they won't get over something. It's just like a mess. It's a mess. This, this, this card in particular is quite a mess. And having it come above your starting position, and again, this is sort of feeling like the, the tent pole or like the focal point here. <sighs> Get in here, I think, and really pay attention to this. If you're putting off a little bit of me time, if you're putting off the min like a little weekend away at the spa, or like I said, if you need to be out in nature, you know, you need to disconnect from your family, disconnect from work. Don't put it off. Go and be about it. I, I think it would help you at the very least to clear your own mind. Okay? Even if you can't work out the issues with that justice card, it'll at least allow you to clear your head. What's your outcome for December? Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Upright, just so you can become used to it. Like I just said, I think. Didn't I just say this? Like, not the result, so you won't get a solution? I feel that here. Final final decision is pending for some of you. It's not the turnover or it's not going to turn. The, why am I saying turnover? Thank you. Ten of Pentacles. Tens in the tarot usually are a, uh, accumulation points where you kind of reach the pinnacle point or the, or the very upper uh, attainment point of something and then you start over again with an ace or you start over again from zero and then you gain an, you gain an ace and two and three and all that kind of stuff and it increment it cycles back basically so being that this is in reverse some of you are not going to get that turnover you're not going to begin that new cycle just yet which would then again reflect back to that world card right you're not going to be able to turn that page just yet uh, within the month of December. So again, the result, the outcome is sort of pending. Even though this is in your outcome position, it's it's telling me mm, we're not going to see the results just yet. Okay. For others of you, you're going to feel because Ten of Pentacles can talk about legacy. I'll show you again in the upright because it's this little figure holding up a dinner plate, a pentacle or dinner plates are pentacles in this deck. There we go. <laughs> uh, but holding up this dinner plate, holding up this very big pentacle, and there are other pentacles surrounding this lovely estate home looking uh, landscape, right? So there's this interest or there's this idea of legacy, of home, of family, of inheritances, of heritage, and all that kind of stuff. And being that it's in the reverse, there might be some destabilization for a while. For some of you, there might be, like I said, this whole lack of getting along, this whole lack of having consistency or, or lack of having, in this case, everybody all together, like having everybody on the same page or literally because of the holidays, uh, a lack of having people able to make it to, to the holidays. Maybe, like I said before, with this justice card, you might have a sister or a brother or, or a cousin or whoever who's estranged from the family, who has written you all off or in some cases has been, uh, um, disowned by the family for some reason they've been ostracized they've been kicked out it's not the parents that you know what i mean like there's <laughs> this could be sliced up in so many ways and this could be given so many different perspectives but there just is this continued energy of a discrepancy of having two or more people at odds with each other and that's not your goal I don't think Aquarius, I don't think you aim to see people at odds. I think you, mm, you're not as diplomatic as say a Libra would be. A Libra would be very diplomatic. Would they be great at diplomacy? Debatable. But <laughs> they're, they're, one of their core focuses is relationships with other people. 
you can have that be your focus, but it's usually not, if I'm honest. But for right now, this is at least what you're observing. If you don't really care about it, you would at least be able to discern and to point to, well, Uncle Jim and, and Cousin Ron, they don't get along, so they're not coming. And me and my mom, well, we're speaking now, but, you know, I, I, I'm thinking back to that incident in 1998 where blah, blah, blah. You know, so you're able to... From afar, there it is. That's that's how you do it. You have this objective perspective or this distance perspective where you're able to see who's not getting along and why. And you can see that's your interest or that's, that's your strong suit, uh, Aquarius, is that you're able to argue either side. And you do it objectively. Like, Libra would do it, but they would be like, sort of aligned to one side or the other you would be very removed from it. So that's what I'm getting, is like, you see there's this discrepancy, you see that there's this, you know, irreconcilable difference between people, and you're just like, well, that's it. That's what it's gonna be. And you kind of roll with it. You kind of just like, okay, that's what we're doing this year. This is how 2018 is gonna wrap up. We're having arguments, people aren't coming in for the holidays, or, I'm doing this at the job and people are being crazy over here. And you're just like accepting that. All right. Okay. Fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're just like sitting there and you're just like, that's, that is the fact. That is the fact of this situation. That is the reality of the situation. Um, I also feel that that's not pleasant for you. It's not like what you want. It's just, you're not wanting to, not that you don't want to. It's just like, there's not much more you can do. I think we've talked a lot here about what you can do, what you might do, what you might not want to do, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of potentiality here. And if you don't get a certain result, I don't think you're going to be super upset about it. I think you're just going to see it as, okay, this is what happened with my input and everybody else's input. And this is what we ended up with. Okay. And you're just kind of, maybe you'll study it. Maybe you'll take the time and, you know, run back the play-by-play, -play, sort of go back and look at the footage, you know, and kind of figure out a strategy for the future. I don't feel that you're like super uh, dejected or, or feeling dismayed by this. It's just really like a, that's what happened. The facts are the facts. This is, this is how December 2018 ended up. Okay. Next, you know, it's like, let's just wait for the next, not wait, but let's see what's coming down the line next. And then we'll have a better, we'll be, be better able to plan the next thing. Okay. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, your overall, wow, your overall, look at that, all that major arcana energy up in your top line. Now your overall energy is the magician card. <laughs> in this, in this deck, uh. A washer salesman right <laughs> um but the magician traditionally is the man who man or woman doesn't matter there's no gender in in tarot but is the the man or woman who can make anything happen magician like it like a like a mage <laughs> like somebody who you know has a magic wand up his sleeve you know uh but basically has the ability to turn things either way i can use my powers for good i can use my powers for evil it's kind of truly what the magician is all about um but there's this idea with the magician that he has to believe it right and that's where i think the salesman part comes in in this particular deck a salesman is only as good as <laughs> what he to me at least believes now in my experience you have salespeople who are like really honest they're going to tell you get this one not that one because that one's a piece of junk it's it's parts come from here or you know it's going to die on you in the next two years but if you get this one it's 50 bucks more but i'm telling you it's going to last you longer blah, blah 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 and those salesmen are being genuine they're being honest pushing the same product on you because they honestly believe it's a better product even though it's a higher price ticket right now, you have another salesman who's a little dishonest, who's going to push that higher product on you. And they might use the same language. Oh, this one's going to die on you. This one here is going to last. But what they're not telling you is, I'm also going to get a higher commission because you're buying the more expensive model. So I hope that makes sense to you. You can 
give a sales pitch because you're trying to uplift the customer or show the customer that you care about what goes on in their lives and, and how they spend their money, you know, how they're investing in their uh, future or, 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 or whatever. You can come from that empathetic, I, hey man, we're all out here trying to make a buck. I understand it's going to cost you more, but I'm honestly telling you, this is just going to be better for you in the long run. That's that sympathetic tone, right? The other side is, you know, this one over here, it's, it's less money, but I mean, that's for a reason. It's a piece of junk. If you get this one, you're getting top of the line, you're getting top class, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, that to me is a little more disingenuous. I don't know if you experienced that in your life, but I have where salespeople just, they're different. And the magician is like that. I can give it to you and I can be empathetic and I can come from a place of we're all in this together kind of thing. Or I can come in and be self-serving. I can come in here and be manipulative. I can come in here and try to get others to participate in things or to act certain ways, but it benefits me. Selfish. Um, so there's just this overall this or that potentiality for your reading. It can go this way or it can go that way. It really all depends on how you align yourself, how you get your focus, how you get yourself grounded, how you relax and get your meditation on, get your reflection on, and then you go from there. The magician is not a guarantee for anything. <laughs> you know, like I said, his his intention or his, his, his actions can be good or bad or aligned with good or bad things, okay? So a little bit of a question mark, you know, your reading has a little bit of this, I don't know what happens next. It could go this way. It could go that way. Maybe that's what you need right now. I don't know. You let me know. <laughs> okay. That is your reading for December Aquarius. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. If you did like buttons down below, you can also subscribe to the channel and share comments or share the video, but then you can also comment as well. Uh, if you want to tell me how this resonated with you, I would love to hear about it. And I will be back very shortly, hopefully within the next week, within next week, with your January 2019 readings. And I look forward to seeing you guys then. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.